Hi, I'm Ron Wilkie, and I am your cybersecurity quarterback. And the goal, well, the actual topic for today is the SSL V3 Poodle vulnerability. And the goal is to explain this technical vulnerability in a way without using too many technical terms. As you know, uh, the CSQB is all about project management and cybersecurity, cybersecurity being merged together in a particular methodology that I've been explaining over the past couple of videos. So let's get right down to it and let's talk about the SSL V3 Poodle vulnerability. First of all, SSL V3 came about in 1996. This version of SSL uh, came out in 1996 and its replacement came out TLS version 1 in 1999. All right, so it's pretty old, 18 years SSL v3 and uh, I, yeah, 15 years for TLS. So also, um, why do we worry about something that's so old? Well, that's because um, we have, we always want to work backwards as it relates to compatibility. So people have old systems or in some other countries they may be using old technology in some places they're even using Windows 95 so you want to be able to have your systems talk to older legacy systems so that's why uh, we worry about and that's why we keep SSL v3 even though we have a replacement for it so what has to happen in order to use this vulnerability is that you need to have someone who uh, first of all has the knowledge of this vulnerability and this person I'm drawing this person right here the attacker has to trick the user and the web server or the, you know just in case you don't understand what a web server is the website the web company into using SSL v3 right so how does he do that or how does that person that attacker do that well that's what we will discuss uh, today so first of all let's say I will do pretty much a graphical representation of you on your computer here sending information over here B to the web server this could be your email it could be your bank. It can be any website with um, web traffic. And you're sending data to that web server. And so let's say this data is very important. So you want to encrypt this data. So this is your data. And it's very important to you. Now remember, we have this guy right here, this attacker sitting just down here chilling don't forget the horns and is monitoring your traffic some kind of way he is sniffing your traffic he's on your network he's doing a man in the middle attack which is on a different video I explain how to do man in the middle attacks and he is sniffing your data he's looking at everything so he notices this information is going from A to B and this is uh, important data this is financial records or it could be uh, your passwords it can be anything so the first thing that has to happen when you're using SSL is that you will get a message authentication code let me use a different color let me erase this what color should I use let's go with green you will add a message authentication code stands for Mac stands for message authentication code this is added to your data and this lets the web server know that it has received your data and it is complete if it has been altered in any type of way the connection will be severed alright so that's the first thing you get so let me explain how encryption works first of all um, let's say this is your data and you need to encrypt it so you add and your data is in plain text so let's say you have your password and it's just like in plain text you can see it is not asterisked out it's not dashed out or anything it's not encrypted you can see it so what happens is you actually get a key 
and you add the key to your plain text. And what you get out of it is your cipher text. Okay, so that makes sense. That's not too technical, is it? And on this end right here, when they receive your information, your data, it's a cipher text. And when they use the same key, they know the key, you've given them the key, then they get the plain text. Whatever that information is that you're sending. And if the Mac has a message authentication code which serves as integrity checker, some type of checksum. In one of my earlier videos, I talked about the CIA, the triad of security. It has to have confidentiality, integrity, and authen uh, authentication. No, availability. I'm sorry. Why did I say authentication? Uh, availability. And that Mac serves as the integrity checker. All right. So when you get your key, your ciphertext, you get your key, plain text. So that's how encryption works. So what happens is that, and without getting too technical, when you send your data, it goes in blocks. Right? So you have your data, right? All of this. You use your key, right? And now, hold on, let me do it this way. Just make it a little bit more plain for you. You have your data, you add your key to it. So now it looks like this. Right, so you had this, you added this, and now it's this. And that's denoted by a plus with a circle. So now you take this block, right? This block, you add this to it, and you have a different key. And you keep doing this. You take the next block, oops, I'm sorry. You block you add that and so now you have something like we'll call it Z so now you have this block plus this Z and you come out with something else let's say it's a squiggly line so you can see how your data looks different in its transmission it's one block then a different block then a different block then a different block this is how encryption works so th this attacker sees all of this information so it takes your data let me switch the color because I'm representing the bad guy in red so this bad guy is gonna take your data all right so all of this so he has it that's the squiggly line remember the squiggly line this is what he gets he doesn't have the original data he has all of these different encrypted packets. So I mentioned to you that you have to have a Mac. This is part of the SSL process. But in order for the encryption to actually work, it has to be a certain length. So before it gets to be, it has to be a certain length. You can't just send the data. If it's, it has to be a multiple, oops, I'm using red. Let me use a different color to represent encryption. I'll go back to my trusty blue. So it has to be, if you're using AES encryption, it has to be a multiple of 16 bytes for the length of the data. If it's DES, a multiple of 8 bytes. So how do you get your data to be the correct length? Well, you do some padding you pad the rest. So I'm representing this padding with random data, just random data, to make it the right length. But this last little bit, I will put in the actual size because you have to tell it how long your padding is. Hold on one second. And that's the size. You have to put in the size, actually. I think I want to use a different one. 
There we go. You have to put in, put in the size. All right. So where was I? It has to be the right size. So when this uh, attacker takes uh, your data, he has to send it. Oops, use a different color. He has to send it, he or she, to the web server. But he has to also add the packets, the random data, and the packet size. Now, usually, this S does not equal this S. They do not equal. Sorry, that's supposed to be kind of like that. Oops, like that. They usually don't equal. But 1 in 256 times, it will check off. It will work. He will send this, and guess what? Because uh, it equals up, the integrity checker will uh, not interrupt the transmission. When this doesn't work, B goes back to A, and there's an error, and the transmission is cut. And what I should have done is used red for that, but that's okay. The transmission is cut, but when he gets it right, it's not cut. It's actually, hold on one second. I cannot delete that. Okay, there we go. When it's not cut, he actually knows it's not cut because there's no error sent back to the sender. So now he is cooking with grease. He knows this is right. So now that he knows this is right, he has that previous block. He has the S, the size. He can then get one character of the, I'm going to write it out because it's important, of the plain text. Woohoo! Uh, wait, wrong color. Hold on. <laughs> uh oh, where did my mouse go? Oh, there it is. All right, I got to do this correctly. All right, so now this guy is happy. But you may say, now that's a lot of work for one character of the plain text. Well, it turns out that you can automate this process, right? And like I said, you had to tr you have to trick the user in the web server and then using SSLv3. So when you automate this process, you the attacker will actually create a web page. Maybe I should uh, put that somewhere else. Hold on. Okay, you can tell I like this little drawing pen thingy. All right. So this guy he actually creates a web page. I'm going to call it a, a fake web page. And he sends it to person A. He sends it to you, right? Okay. When you respond to that link, let's say you're really into shoes, and it, the attacker sends you a shoe email, <laughs> an email from your favorite shoe store and you click the link and you go to log in well you're actually logging in to his fake web page and then he's sending it to the real web server and through this transaction through this yeah transaction he's able to automate that process and steal your cookies or your cookie or cookies and so by stealing your cookie, this guy can pretend that he is you. <laughs>